So hello there, today I want to show you how I remove the hoop balls from the cocoons of Sormio, Tintio, Rizzini. As you can see I have a lot of them here already and of course we have to prepare them in a way for the ones that we want to need for our next uh, generation. We must uh, pre present them a special construction so that when they come out of the cocoon that they can stretch their wings, they can hold to something. Best would be a stick like this and that's the exact the way we want to do it. And we want to make it now. And I'll show you how we can remove the poop balls from the cocoons. There are some reasons to do that. First we have, we want to know whether it's a female or a male because we want to have the best and the biggest and the heaviest uh, poop balls for reproduction for other new a parents of the next generation so how we can find out whether it's a male or a female we have to open it and the opening process as you can see they have two ends at the pupas one seems to be a little bit more um, rounder and one one tip is a little bit more spiky we have to open it at this side and we do it in a way that we just tear away to both sides of the of the cocoon and then we see that an opening appears on the top here if we go if we go on the lens you see when we tear from both sides we see that an opening appears in the in the inner cocoon that's the open mouse cocoon of Somia Ritini that's the that's the difference to Bombix Mori. Bombix Mori is completely um, inside this um, cocoon, but with some Aritini, the caterpillar builds a kind of an opening where the where later the adult can come out, and that is the the way it's constructed. And so that's the way also we can open it without killing uh, the pupa inside. What you see here under this under the this lens is two purple skins, uh, larval skins of the last L5 store, in-store larva. They are very small and very very light, so you see it's only a very small and thin construction, this chitin shell around the larva. They don't waste much material to do so because chitin is such a, a good uh, material. If you want you can also use an instrument to just to, to cut it open. Of course you have to do it a bit carefully not to kill or, or harm the pupa inside. So there you see her inside inside this cocoon there is the pupa. And of course not only the pupa but also the skin of the of the caterpillar that this pupa was before. So now let's see whether we can show whether I can show you whether it's a female or a male now it's a, a little bit uneasy here of course. Um, if you go close you can see here that's only one point it's it's like a little slit in in one of the last segments here. That's a sign it's a female because the male they have something uh, different. This is the female. To see the bit clearly, I show you a picture here also where you can see uh, the female. And now I, I I will show you a male. Let's see whether I, where I find it here. This is female. This is also female. So this must be the male here. Yep, here it is. So with the male, this uh, little point at the end is but it's clearer this point here and it has a little slit in the middle so it's it's a uh, it's like a little heart with a slit in the middle so that's the sign of the male you can also see it here on this photograph um, this is the male and if you do that the first time you have to use um, a glass to see the detail 
But if you're used to do that, that is no problem. After some minutes or so, you will find out what it is, a male or a female. And then if, uh, if we know, oh, that's a beautiful big female, look, this one here. Uh, let's see whether we have a weight scale to see how heavy it is also. Because normally the big, the big poopos of some are they can be up to two grams. So it would be nice to see whether we have here also a beautiful and big female. Well, let's see whether we can start it here. Yeah. And I think this one is the biggest. We just try to weigh on the scale. It's exactly 2.0. Gram. Now it's 2.1, so <laughs> that 2 gram is a very, very nice size for Salmiorecini. You can see it here for the people who want to eat them. These are the snacks, and they are the most loved snacks in a lot of countries in Asia, uh, where when people go out in the evening, they want to eat something salty and crispy. They eat, of course, edible insects like this one here. Um, Looks like this is they are uh, cooked and dried of course and if you taste them they taste very well crispy a little salty a little with a little bit chili inside very nice taste so if you want to eat them don't put them into a hot pan just as living animals. Just first put them together in the freezer so temperatures go down, all the metabolic processes stand still and the animal can die without uh, having too much stress. But of course if you want to breed them you need all of your nice and beautiful um, animals and of course if, if we want to keep this beautiful big female let's just put it back to the originals chamber you can add some of this silk stuff that is around just to cover it a little bit better and then I I just fix it with the tape to one of these wooden sticks but in a way that it that the adult can crawl out as soon as it's ready. That's the way I do it. And also, if you to know that it's a female or a male, I make a red point, means that's a female. And then you can put some of them together um, in a little box where I have some wetted sponges on the bottom so that they just don't dry out and to protect them I just cover it like this so humidity keeps high and in about uh, two weeks we should see the next uh, generation of adults. If you want to use the silk you just can keep it like this in a box and wait until you have enough to start thinking about what do we do with it. And I will show that to you later also in some of the next uh, videos. Thanks for watching.